You wake up on an unknown island with no memories how you got there, who you are, or what anything is. You look around with wide eyes as an older man towers above you, holding your breath as your life is in their hands. Six words to describe your fate. Six words that would change the course of history forever. Welcome to the world of Pokemon. This is Pokemon Infinity. We start the game in a nearby town to rest up before making our way over to the house of the man who rescued us. Uh, it's me, Lucy. I was one of the people who helped you out of the forest. I think Professor Wormwood wanted you to stop by when you got up. He's the professor here in Ego. What's up, Professor Wormwood? Ah, uh, yes, Grill. So glad to see you up and moving around. Surely you're feeling better by now. I was hoping I could talk to you for a bit before you inevitably went on your way. The thing is, Ego is a small island region. When someone new touches foot here, there isn't a soul on the island that isn't made aware in under a day. So why does no one know who you are? <laughs> Great options here. <laughs> That's what I was afraid of. No memories to help solve this mystery. I believe that in order for you to figure out why you're here and where you came from, you're going to have to traverse this island. Wouldn't it be wise to do that without a partner of your own. All right, so who is our starter Pokemon? Bulbasaur, the Cactus Bulb Pokemon. Charmander, the Flare Lizard. Or Squirtle, the Rain Cloud Pokemon. Cloud Squirtle it is. <laughs> We'll pronounce it Cumulus. After getting our strange new starters in the strange new region, we meet a local bright-eyed boy who's excited to take on the Ego Council Challenge. Our rival's name is Teal, and the Ego Council Challenge is this island's version of the classic gym challenge we all know and love. Everything so far seems oddly familiar, yet distinctly different. Youngster Joe. Things are off here, and it seems like the only way to find out what's going on is to make our way to Professor Thorne and see if the smartest mind in Ego can help. What's up, Lucy? I'm glad I caught up to you. The professor wanted me to meet up with you and give you this piece of junk. It's an old broken gadget he was hoping Thorne could fix. Let's take a look at the town map. Whoa, it's small. Um, <clears throat> no chat, I mean, this is like, this is like average size. We're in Sea Ridge Town right now, second town, home of the name raider. Something in here. What is, what is that? It's ice type. Do I want this? A full cloud team? Let's go! Swablu it is. All right, let's heal our Pokemon up. Oh, hello there. My name is Donnie. I'm an avid shiny hunter, and I'm not ashamed to admit it. At least the game is self-aware. Great to meet you, girl. See ya. Huh, I wonder who that is. Yeah, wait, how did he know my name? After a fair bit of traveling and catching a Spiro going through a midlife crisis, we make it to the ridge to see if Professor Thorne knows anything about our situation. You're finally here! I have a few working theories, but I need more information before I can start ruling anything out. First thing we have to do is run a diagnosis scan of your brain and other vitals. From there, I can start to get to the bottom of this. When you're ready to run a preliminary scan, meet me down in my lab. Before I forget, didn't Wormwood send some sort of device with you that he wanted me to fix? Right, the old gadget. Oh, perfect. I'll take a look at this once we're done. Fairly good at engineering tasks, so I should be able to do something with this. Speaking of, do you see this machine in front of us? It's a device of my own creation, an advanced quantum particle displacer. This machine is what we'll be using to scan you and see what kind of information we can gather. Don't worry, it'll be a harmless. I'll be real, I don't trust this thing. <laughs> That's odd. It seems to be having issues with retrieving energy from the batteries on the solar panels. Why don't you go investigate? I'm sure it's a wild Pokemon getting into mischief. Upon walking outside to see why the solar panels weren't working, we notice a man tampering with the devices. I was instructed to sabotage the solar panel. What will you do about it? Who are you? Team Fate. Grunt would like to battle. Team Fate? Oh, sh we're not doing any damage. Oh, we got the flinch though. Let's go. Oh, we got the second flinch though? He kind of looks like Teal a little bit. I'm not sure what the purpose of temporarily disabling his panels is, but I trust my source. Please stand aside. I have to get to the next mission. No clue who that was or why they were there, but we make our way back to Professor Thorne, who starts up the quantum device to peer into our mind for our lost memories. Deep inside of our mind is the reminder to subscribe to my channel if you like my videos so we can make this number go bigger. That's crazy how that just worked so well. Uh, anyways, enough with the subscribe plugs. Here's what we actually saw, and it's much creepier than you think. What? Oh, what? it's harmless. Don't worry. Nothing bad's gonna happen. Where are we? I'm sorry. I cannot help you. 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 I don't know what happened with us or why her memories are like this, but let's go to sleep, chat. 
You want to lay down? Yeah. Grill, are you there? Grill, hey! Uh, uh, wake up! You want a rooftop with four pillars? That is an odd dream. Though, you were only there for 10 seconds. There's no way you could have fallen into the correct sleep cycle fast enough to... Uh, never mind. I don't, I don't know about that, dude. What happened? What is going on? Maybe this is me just being, like, just, just playing too many Pokemon fan games like Insurgents, Uranium, Rocket Edition, I, that I just don't trust any NPCs. Professor Thorne then instructs us that she needs more powerful materials to go deeper into her brain and find out what's happening, especially after what we just witnessed. The old gadget that Professor Wormwood gave us is perfect for that, and she needs Arcanium Ore, a special material from the next town over to construct the battery. So, we leave Thorne's laboratory with more questions than answers and make our way to Echo Rock Town. Oh, yo, Cumulus is evolving. Okay. Okay, I like it, I like it. Through the cave and into Echo Rock Town, we find the first miner we see and ask about the Arcanium Ore and if he has any, but it's not that easy. The miner is a gambling man and challenges us to a battle to get some free product, but it's not a battle against the miner. Down in the town below is one of the Ego Council members visiting for the Koros Festival. If we can return with a badge, the miner will give us the last of his stock. If you lose, then I guess you'll just have to come back and buy some when the festival is over. Wow, look at this. That's a beautiful statue. Please don't mess up our rhythm. We perfected it uh, for the Koros Festival. Oh no. Oh no, I f***ed it up. Maybe I'll talk to you and I'll fix it. Uh, it's, it's close. They're kind of fixed. Hello there, young... Oh, wait a minute. You must be that child that Wormwood found asleep in the woods. Oh, sorry, my name is Geralt. I'm one of the older members of the Ego Council. I'm just here to observe the ending of the Koros Festival. What's that? You want a battle right now? I guess the party I brought with me will have to do. Ego Elder Geralt would like to battle. I will just foggy strike here. It'll be good. I also get poison from Poison Point. I'm pretty sure for that. No, but it's likely. Ah, and the poison sting, dude. Please. This is not going well. That's gonna kill. All right, then we'll rock throw with rock. Super effective. Let's go. Let's go. And then rock. Oh, please. Easy first try, dude. Great job, kid. You're surprisingly competent for someone who just woke up with amnesia. Hey, we got our first badge. There are four more Ego Council members around the island. One of the other ones, Howlet, actually lives here. As for me, I'm going to get back to enjoying my time here. And with that, we unexpectedly have our first council badge. We talk back to the miner to acquire the Arcanium Ore we needed to get and head back to Professor Thorne to build the battery. But before we do that, there was a wishing well that you could throw money into in the village, and I wanted to try something out. Nice. So we make it back to Professor Thorne's place and give her the Arcanium. She mentions that there's good news and there's bad news. The bad news is I need a little more time than expect to figure out what's going on. <sighs> Luckily for you, I have one more errand to send you on to keep you busy. Is that the good news? I know, I know. It feels like I'm just using you to do my bidding. You got that right. Well, I am. Okay, <laughs> but it's not like you have much else going on. While Professor Thorne is working on her calculations and implementing the Arcanium, she's tasked us as her errand girl to deliver a letter to the Safari Zone leader on her behalf. We encounter our rival Teal on the way and battle against his insane starter evolution. Oh, that's badass, dude. Wait, that's actually so sick. Maybe I bite, hope for a flinch. Rough skin, wait, so if you do a physical move on Cactus, it does damage back to you? Good battle, it'll be better next time. We nab this sick new Pokemon too before traveling into the region. It quickly evolves as well into a psychic fire type Burnerang. Look how absolutely sick this guy is. We have a long way to go into Amberfield Town, but it's not without mystery. To get to the Safari Zone, we have to cross an all too familiar place. Stay alert. The target is more likely in the area. These guys are checking out the location of where we woke up. If we can catch Celebi, it's time distorting abilities will give us the upper hand. Got it, Captain. That is unnecessary. You don't have to call me Captain. Commander, what is our next destination? Okay, Commander is a bit too, a bit much. Uh, let's not worry about titles and ranks. And I literally just told you what the plan was before we got here. Have your partner fill you in if you can't remember. 
Affirmative. All right, let's move out. Keep an eye peeled for the time traveler. Damn. Good one, boss. What? Keep an eye peeled like an onion because Celebi's head looks like an onion. Is that why it's considered a grass type? Enough. Well, we need to move. <laughs> this also doesn't explain the weird dream we had where we were in a hospital bed and there was that ghost looking over us, which by the way, I haven't forgotten about that. It's really creepy. On a lighter note, we moved on our journey and encountered a trainer with the new Pokemon Darpole. <laughs> and look how cute he is. I want five of them. We also come across a cemetery on that nearby route, which has to be one of the coolest settings I've seen in a fan game. And trust me, it only gets better from here. There's one last pit stop we have to make before delivering Thorn's letter in Amberfield Town, and that is to face the second Ego Council member. Our angsty Spearow evolves into, Mom, it's not a phase. This is the real me. Fallout Boy turned into Fallout Man. And we face the council member for our second badge. Also, don't fight me on this. That is definitely Wolverine. So we're going to send out Weed, and we're going to Toxic Spikes. Now we're going to Low Kick to kill. Nice. Easy. It's poison. Low kick. One shot. Poison. Poison. Yes! You're gonna come in. Poisoned. I'm gonna ember. It's gonna do the same thing. Oh, but Ponyard's steel type, so it won't it won't be poison. I forgot about that. And then you use the full restore. Actually fine. And the crit! I'm telling you, dude! Oh my god, and yes! Yes! We defeated the second elder. Great job, kid. I give you the rend badge. Okay, okay. One last thing before Amberfield Town. This trainer had an Egoian Charmeleon, and I just had to show you guys. Yo, what is that Charmeleon, dude? We also use a Firestone on a Pikachu to make it evolve, and it is the weirdest thing. But alas... The errands are over when we finally make it to the safari zone and deliver the letter. We receive some sound advice from the local snob. Some people say the safari tickets are expensive. They need to just be like me, work hard and inherit a bunch of money from your rich relative. It's not that hard to get rich, dude, obviously. And then we hand over the letter to the warden, declining his advances. Here's the letter. Ah, I see. Well, no surprise then. Thorn has always kept them uh, to themselves. Oh, the grand opening? We went ahead with it a few hours ago. It became apparent to me that Professor Thorn wasn't going to show up. Our war turtle evolves into a Blastoise, and we make it use Fly to head back to Thorn's lab. You're back! How did the warden take my letter? Oh, good. Sounds like he wasn't too devastated. <laughs> anyway, I finished up my work. I think I figured it all out, but I need you to step into the scanner one more time. All right, here we go. What the? What the heck is this? Oh, and there's the ghost again. It's only a matter of time. All we can do is wait. It's only a matter of time. All we can do is wait. What? Are we in a coma or something? Am I, are we dead? Like what's going on? Stop. There's a, there's a phone call at the end of all, a dark hallway? Dude, I don't like scary things, man. Why would you answer it, dude? Why? Don't, don't answer it. Let it go to voicemail. Come back home. My heart, dude. Oh, the phone's ringing again. Dude, dude. Dude, the phone's ringing again. Dude, I hate this. This isn't supposed to happen to you. It's the ringing again. This can't last much longer. Box of tools, not enough to fix yourself. An escape rope, but you cannot escape. How can you wake up if you keep going back to sleep? It's not ringing anymore. You want to lay down? Oh, thank you, girl. That scan confirmed parts of my hypothesis. What is this fan game, dude? That is horrifying. I apologize for how long this is all taken. I appreciate your patience. You have no memories prior to waking up here, and your body is made of elements that haven't even been discovered yet. At least, not in this world. The point I'm getting at is... You were not from this world, Grill. I do not think you were even from this universe. Knowing that we're not only from a different time, but a totally different place too, Professor Thorne comes up with a plan to get us back to wherever our home is. The island of Ego has a history of space-time deities. There are three temples around the region. The Koros Temple, the Kronos Temple, and the Chaos Temple. We don't have to summon the legendaries at all, 
but we have to travel into those temples and gather pieces of the Arcanium crystals deep inside their layers so we can use them to make a machine that transports us to our correct reality. The bad news about this journey, the Chaos Temple was destroyed when Giratina emerged in a freak accident 100 years ago. The good news, we don't need to get the dark energy crystals at all. The space crystal and the time crystal should be enough. We'll start with the space crystal at Koro's Temple. We have an ambitious task ahead of us. Get going, Grill. Your way home is within reach. It's not a Pokemon journey if we don't encounter our rival on our way to clearly more important tasks. He does have some really cool Pokemon to show us, though. Brutoad, what is this thing? Oh, that is so cool, dude. Bested again. That's okay. You just keep giving me motivation to get stronger. I'm going to check out the Safari Zone now. See ya. On the way to Hayesport City, I encounter another crazy Pokemon variant, and it quickly evolves into something even cooler. Our Burnaram also evolves into a Psy Steed, and our Swablu evolves into a fluffy Altaria, which has to be one of my favorite designs for a fan-made Pokemon. I just want to give it the biggest hug I can. That's not the only thing Pokemon Infinity knocks out of the park design-wise. I've been glossing over the visuals and creative freedom of this fan game, but look at this route. It's a full suburb filled with wild Pokemon and trainers all fully explorable with side quests like tag and hidden nooks and crannies to top it off there's a phenomenal story involved so buckle up all right let's go find the uh oh my god there's so much in this dude there's so much here oh my god there's a second i just want to know where the poke center is man i'm on break but i can still help here i'll heal your pokemon thank you i wouldn't want to about someone who isn't fully ready Once we actually end up finding the Pokemon Center in the concrete maze we found ourselves in, we head outside to hear a concerning conversation. Be on the lookout for any suspicious characters. We had a burglary at the museum and we believe the suspect is still in the city. We've been searching in the streets, but we may have to move down into the maintenance tunnel soon. Real great to see you. It's me, uh, Geralt. Seems that the museum has been raided. A thief took off with an ancient artifact. So while we're here in Hayesport, we might as well find an artifact thief and help the city. Our first stop is to look at the art gallery, which presented such classics as Starly Knight, Smiling Woman, and The Screech. An existential Psyduck grapples with the concept of its own mortality. Our second stop was the sewers, because that was the only next logical conclusion. What? I didn't take anything! And even if I did, it wouldn't be any of your business! Pokemon trainer Marcus, who's the thief. Okay, I'll still flame charge even though there's drizzle out. And fire punch. This could be good. Yeah, the burn. Let's go. All right. We'll... Oh, fire punch for. Oh, that's fine too. Still. Never mind. That's not fine at all. It's still flying type, right? Isn't Vibrava flying dragon type? It's ground dragon, but it's flying. Literally a dragon fly. That's fine. Nice. Fine. You're right. I should give it back. Just don't feel right about it, is all. This beautiful artifact originally belonged to my ancestors. Most of them perished when Giratina destroyed the temple in the desert. The stone I reclaimed from the museum was excavated from the ruins of the temple. Geralt is going to start holding tournaments at the top of Trident Tower, and he wants to use this stone as a selling point. It just didn't sit right with me that one of the few remnants of my people was going to be used in a way that completely neglects their story. I suppose I should take accountability for my actions. After talking it out, it's agreed upon that the trophy will remain a symbolic piece in the museum, and any winners of the tournament will have their names engraved on it, rather than keep the the trophy for themselves. We also find out that Marcus is the son of Olivia, the Ego Council member we need to beat. Following this debacle, Marcus points us in the correct direction to the Dunestone Desert, and we travel there to get access to the Koros Temple and retrieve the Space Crystal. But before that, we'll make a quick stop to the museum and do some thieving of our own in the garden. Don't talk to me about double standards, okay? Marcus is the guy who got caught. We're the ones that'll get away with it. We do want to go up, it looks like. Hello? I think I'm almost to the oasis. I can feel it. Sphinxion? Is that like a ground tight Eevee? Wait, that's so sick. So thirsty. Me too, dude. Oh, here. Dunestone Oasis Historical Site. Hello! Welcome to the Dunestone Oasis. My name is Olivia. I'm one of the members of the Ego Council. I'm also the director of the Dunestone Oasis Historical Site. If you're interested in a complimentary tour, feel free to meet me back at the visitor center. It turns out the area where Olivia, the third council member, is staying is in the old ruins of the Chaos Temple. Whoa. Welcome to the Dunestone Oasis Tour. I am Olivia of the Ego Council, and I will be your tour guide for this special outing. Without further ado, let us begin. Uh, a palm tree. You can tell because of the way it is. These trees are native to like sandy areas, I guess. As you may have noticed, there's a lot of sand in the general vicinity. You're so good at this. This is obviously the oasis. It used to be a little bit bigger, I think. 
how neat is that? This is a large chunk of stone that has been here for at least 100 years. Some more enthusiastic geologists have claimed it may be several thousand years old. Seems like kind of a stretch. Uh, she, I guess she really knows her things. And with that, the tour is complete. Like I said earlier, though, you'll now face me in a Pokemon battle for the chance to earn the badge I hold. Yeah, what a tour! I hope you were taking notes during the tour because now it's time to put you to the test. Ego Elder Olivia would like to battle. She also has six Pokemon? Bro, what? Okay, you have Sandstream whipped with Sandstorm, but that overrides my Drizzle? Are you serious? I'll Aqua Tail one more time. You withdrew to Cactor? And you have Water Absorb. Are you serious? Let's Typhoon here then. And my Quick Claw, let me move first. Very awesome. This should KO. Nice. And the Cacturn died. Let's go. Roll high. Roll high. I'm a gambling man. He missed. He missed the Dragon Rush. He missed the Dragon Rush. All right. She's going to use the Full Restore. Yes, we finally killed the Garchomp. We're already going second. Okay, we can kill with another Aqua Tail. Nice. There's no shot we outspeed. Oh, I have Levitate. Oh! Let's go! GG. Nimbus, my little fluffy cloud. We defeated Ego Elder Olivia. With victory over our third council member, I head back to Professor Thorne to tell her the good news. And good news it is. With our ability to now smash rocks, we can access the Palkin Heights and retrieve our first of the two Arcanium Crystals we need. Oh, and that mysterious egg we borrowed from the museum? It hatched. And not so long after, it evolved. These fake Pokemon are just so cool in this game. But after a long trek, we finally make it to the peak of Palkin Heights with some familiar faces battling the locals at the top. But no matter, we need to retrieve those crystals. Oh, hello. I was wondering when you and I would cross paths. You didn't think I saw you back in the Genesis Forest, did you? I am you. No, you're not. I'm me. You're you. I'm the leader of Team Fate. If you're here for Palkia, you are too late. I've already captured it. Oh. I'm not interested in wasting my time battling you right now. Consider yourself lucky. You should put an end of whatever little adventure Professor Thorne has uh, tasked you with. You were dealing with forces beyond your understanding. You can tell Thorne I said that. So you know Thorne. What? After that weird encounter, I head down below the temple and finally collect the space shard we've been looking for. One quick stop to Thorne, and we tell her what happened. So some person named you hijacked the whole summoning ceremony, took off with Palkia and the Azure Flute, and they told you to stop working with me. A lot of them specifically mentioned me. I wonder if it's someone I know. In the meantime, were you able to find a shard of charged Arcanium? Uh, there's the Chorus Shard. Fantastic, I'll load it into the machine and start recalibrating. Now we just need a charged shard from the Kronos Temple located on the island up north. Logically, you will probably be heading up there as well if they plan to use the Azure Flute. Let the authorities deal with you. Sorry, not you, I mean you. Jeez, that's gotta be annoying in conversations. In order to get the Time Shard, we need to charter a boat from Haytide Cape to take us to Diamond Peak Town. So I head down to the beach and talk to the locals to see what they know about it. Hey there, the name is Chad, youngest Ego council member in Ego history. Oh, not sure why people still refer to us as the Ego elders. I've obviously disproven that title. If you're here to see me, you must be trying to get the title badge so that you can traverse the high seas. Zoke's on you, you gotta beat me in a battle first. It's a just a, a gym leader out in the wild like this? Oh, we're losing. All right, made it rain, that's fine. We'll discharge here. Oh my god. We might be able to pull this through. We might be able to. There's a small chance. Alright, sick. Skull Kraken. We'll stay in. Oh, yeah, it's a shelter. I, I think it's the shelter uh, um, evolution. So that's two down. Nice. Let's go. Double weak. Oh, it has a berry, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, it doesn't? It just didn't die. I'm going to discharge here. I don't go first. That's huge. Oh, how did we survive? Get wrecked. Close, okay. Oh, the fire blast missed. Let's go. Oh, that's huge. Oh, that's huge. Oh my God, that's huge. I'm gonna fly because we have leftovers here. Nice. Oh my God. And somehow we clutched it out to beat the, 
surprise gym leader out of nowhere. Totally tubular battle. <laughs> Gnarly waves, dude. If we were battling in the water, it would have been a different outcome. But according to Ego Council rules, the battle must be on land to prevent people from drowning. Either way, you beat me. So here's your rifle badge. After that insane surprise encounter, we step onto the boat and make our way towards Diamond Peak Town. It's a remote area in the snowy mountains. And oh my god, look, it's a snowman. Hello, you must be Grill. Professor Thorne gave me a call. Let me know I should be expecting company. My name is Irene, a member of the Ego Council, and by the sounds of it, the last one you need to face to complete the Ego Challenge. If you head west from here, you can find me waiting in front of Kronos Temple. I was beginning to wonder if you had turned back. There's Alga. But no, we both know that isn't your role here. I've heard a bit about you, Grill. Wormwood is an old friend of mine. He actually served on the Ego Council for a while back in the day. He's filled me in on your mysterious appearance in the mainland. However, you got here, and whatever the reason, I believe it was meant to happen. Thorne told me I should be expecting a guest that wanted to see Kronos Temple. The only way for guests to see the inside of the temple is to move the boulders out of the way. One can only move the boulders if they have earned the badge that I hold, and you unlock strength. Grill, I believe it is time for you to earn that badge. Here we go. Uh, sure, yeah. Snow Squatch, it is. That's gonna be, that's super effective. Please do at least half. That's good. And we're also ice type, so we don't take damage from hail. Perfect. Okay. That's good. That's good. That's good. Grass Squatch is next. Okay. Jolly Bird. Wait, Jolly Bird. Is that like a. <laughs> I think it's a Deli Bird evolution. I'll Aqua Tail one more time here. It's not going to kill, but then I'm going to heal next turn. Never mind. It killed. I lied. Sorcerice? Is that a Jinx evolution? <laughs> that just looks like Princess Peach, I won't lie. And then that should kill. Nice. Grill defeated Ego Elder Irene. You are an exceptional trainer. Well fought. And Pebbles evolving. Oh, that is, yeah, a drag oil. That is really sick. And here is the last badge to complete your collection. The Vitality Badge, the very last badge we need. Do you feel that? A bit colder than I remember. Oh, so that Oh, they're gonna they're gonna summon Dialga. That's okay. We won't be here for long. You know your objectives. Let's move. Interesting. Did those people just teleport out of thin air? Grill. Earlier I said that you were here for a reason. I believe whoever those people are, their fates intertwined with yours. I healed your party. Should go confront those trespassers. And confront we shall. We swiftly defeat the team fate grunts and make our way to the bottom of the temple to see what you was up to. And so we can collect the shard, we need to get back to our timeline. You're too late, again. Like I told you before, kid, you're up against forces you don't understand. I've already captured Dialga and Palkia, which completely neutralizes Thorne's plants. That's right. I'm on a mission to stop Professor Thorne from capturing the power of the space-time deities. With two out of three now in my control, it seems I may have already won. I know I said I didn't want to waste time battling you last time, but I just can't pass up the opportunity to test them out in battle. Maybe this will put an end to your ambitions. What? Okay, you. Okay, it's a double battle. Oh God. Oh, we're over oh, against Palkia and Dialga. Okay, Nimbus and those levitate. Oh, I should have Dragon Pulse. That's still the same. Nice. Super effective. And Grill defeated Team Fate Boss Yu. There's, there's no way. You were able to dispatch two deities at once. They must need more time to stabilize after being summoned. No matter. I've got one Pokemon left to catch. Without Dialga, there's no way you or, you or Thorn will be able to stop us. Your efforts will only prove futile. Goodbye, Grill. So with that incredibly stranger encounter under our belt, we nab the Chrono Shard, evolve our Magnemite, and head back to Professor Thorne, who can hopefully solve our dimensional problem and maybe answer some of these new questions we have. What is Professor Thorne really up to? Was you right? They think I want you to capture the deities for me? What are they talking about? As you know, I have not asked you once to try to capture those Pokemon. In fact, I encourage you to stay away from them, as they can be extremely dangerous. So I find it odd that they think they're foiling some sort of plan of mine. Luckily, all that nonsense should be done and over with now. Once the system reboots, I should be able to send you back to your own time. Professor Thorne then boots up the machine, both shards implanted, and it doesn't go well. You see, interestingly enough, she thought we were from a different place in time from here. Except, that's not the case at all. Thorn tells us that we're from an entirely different reality altogether. In order to transcend reality itself, 
We need that shard from Giratina too, but that temple was destroyed. Good news though, we basically have a time machine constructed now. So, using the space and time crystals we've gathered, Thorn is going to send us back in time to collect the final shard from Giratina when it was summoned 100 years ago. Let's go back in time? Initializing time placement protocol. And we're back to Dunestone Oasis. That suit looks oddly familiar to the Team Fate suits. Grill, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, fantastic. Anyways, I'm communicating with you uh, through your new suits. Hope it fits okay. It should protect. No, it will protect you from cosmic radiation and space time distortion. Tread carefully, Grill. Your Tina may be summoned at any moment. Well, they seem really nice. There's, there's no hostiles in the area, really. A bunch of strange people zapped out of the sky and rushed into the temple. I wonder what they're doing. Oh, that's the hostiles. Okay. We face the Team Fate grunts one more time before descending to the depths of the temple for our final crystal. A roar was heard from the floor below. Oh. Giratina, I have summoned you in hopes of persuading you to join my cause. We have an opportunity to... What the? How, how did you get here? There's no way you could have... Of course. Thorn must have figured out an alternative time traveling method. No matter, if you're here, that means you still need Giratina's power. Unfortunately for you, I do believe Giratina was just about to join me. I guess Dialga and Palkia will have to convince you. Grill, I'm getting you out of here. Right as we were about to take the shard, Thorn teleported us out for our own safety. We're fresh out of luck on the time traveling front, but there was one other thing we could try. Remember that trophy debacle that we helped solve while we were in Hazeport City the first time? The one where Marcus stole the artifact from the museum? That might be a Chaos Arcanium shard that we need. And there's only one way to find out, and it's to win the tournament and get that trophy. The Trident Tower tournament is about to kick off, and you're just in time to enter. This is the coolest thing, and one of the reasons I absolutely love the storytelling in Pokemon Infinity so much. The Trident tournament is functionally the Elite Four and Champion battles, except it's so extremely plot-driven that you might have missed that fact. We face Marcus and his insane muck evolution, followed by the shiny hunter Donnie, who has a team of all shiny Pokemon. Koba, the third challenger, shows off his insane Charizard, which has to be one of the coolest designs I've seen so far. And finally, we come toe-to-toe -to -toe with Professor Wormwood's apprentice, Lucy, his right-hand woman ever since we started the game, battling it for the title of champion of the Ego region. She shows off her Noctowl evolution and superior Dunsparce, but they're no match for my team. Congratulations, girl. I knew you had it in you to rise up to the challenge. It must be destiny that you've arrived this moment. Do you remember that artifact you helped me retrieve when you first got to Hazeport? I told you you were going to embed it in the trophy for this tournament, and here we are now with you rightfully earning that trophy. And finally, with us being the Ego Council champion and in possession of all three of the shards, we head back to Professor Thorn for the last time. Well, Grill, this is the end of our path. We may not have figured out why you were brought here, but at least we figured out how to get you home. The machine has already made contact with your home reality and should be ready to go shortly. With the power that we've collected from Palkia, Dialga, Giratina, we've essentially harnessed the power to travel through infinite realities. I know you're probably focused on just making it home, but think about the possibilities. We were able to witness a part of Echo from 100 years ago, just with Dialga's power alone. With all three forces synchronized together, we would be able to step foot into any alternate time, place, or dimension that we could fathom. The wonders and achievements we could witness, the mysteries we could solve. Grill, we have opened a door to infinite possibilities. I'm ecstatic at the discoveries that may be waiting for us. Sorry, not us, uh, just me, I suppose. It's time for you to go home. I will go finalize the destination one last time. What the? D did you feel that? What in the world is going on? Whatever happened has knocked out the power to this part of the lab. Sorry, Grill. We need to go figure out what's going on. I just want to go home, man. What's going on? Okay, that makes... Wow. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Cool, cool. Nice. Neat. Uh, I thought that capturing the deities would have put an end to Thorn's schemes. I should have known better than to think I could outsmart Thorn. I told you to stay out of this. I told you to stop working with her. I didn't want you to have to get involved, Grill. My entire mission was to stop Thorn from using you as a means to her end. Well, this looks pleasant. Grill, who do we have here? You know exactly who I am. And at this point, I'm sure the kid does too. I mean, you do seem a tad familiar, I guess. Grill, I need you to listen to me. Professor Thorne is taking advantage of your amnesia to make you help her accomplish something 
more nefarious than she's leading on. She's using you to gather the resources. She needs to create a machine that will distort time and reality. The reason I know she's using you is because she did the same to me when I was your age. Brill, I am you from an alternate future. And Thorn is evil. That's why you is you. I've seen what Thorn has done, hopping through different times and realities without any regard for the collateral damage she leaves behind. I need to stop her here and now. To be fair, you paint me in a very negative light. It's not like I'm jumping through realities maliciously, purposely disrupting people's lives. I was never manipulating Grill. It just so happened that both of our end goals intertwined. Also, I absolutely do care about the ripple effects of her actions through the multiverse. I just see them as too inconsequential to affect my overall pursuit for knowledge. Otherwise, everything else sounds pretty accurate, you know? That's why I must stop you. I will protect the multiverse from you once and for all. The very fact that you're here is proof that I have already succeeded. Think, Grill. How did I know to collect the Arcanium Shards instead of the deities? Why did I send Grill back to 100 years ago instead of to just before they excavated the Chaos Shard? To, to taunt me because I knew what you were doing? Precisely. I knew the instant you sent your team faint grunt to sabotage the first scan. Oh, by the way, if you're going to try to take the moral high ground, you may want to stop snatching kids out of different realities to work for you. You heard right, Grill. All of those team fake runs you've had to fight, I've just been your rival, Teal. I knew, I knew, I knew that he, that's why they looked alike. Pulled from alternate timelines. Hey, I didn't snatch Teal. They agreed to join me. Wait, what does any of this have to do with stopping you? Oh, right. The reason I knew what you were up to is because we've done this back and forth a dozen times before. You weren't the first, you know, to try and stop me. You see, once you've unlocked the gateway to the, the infinite multiverse, it cannot be closed again. The first timeline in which I succeeded in accessing infinite realities was the only one needed to guarantee a flourishing multiverse. It cannot be undone. Every few realities, there will be a scenario just like this where you try to stop me, but always end up a few steps behind. I inevitably give you this same spiel, where I explain the insignificance of your efforts. Then we, of course, battle it out to determine who's right. That's how it's always gone, and that's how it always will go. So that's it? You're just going to keep interfering in different realities, no matter whose life you're ruining? Right, because it doesn't matter. What, their lives don't matter? In the grand scale of infinity, no. They do not. This is where Pokemon Infinity comes in. When there are an infinite number of timelines and realities, Everything and anything that could happen already has. The people whose lives may be affected by our reality hopping actions are worse off in a million different realities and better off in a million others. Our actions on a universal scale are inconsequential, insignificant, practically non-existent. In time, you will come to understand that. I will never accept having a lack of empathy for other people's lives like you have. It's not obvious to you yet, girl. I am you from an even farther future than you are to younger Grill. <laughs> but that's, that's impossible. Possibilities are infinite. Over the last few decades, I have been showing up in alternate timelines of my past in hopes of accomplishing goals more efficiently. I spend time teaching younger me things I wish I had known sooner. I've created a vast network of alternate versions of ourselves, all working together to study and explore the infinite realities we have at our disposal. Every once in a while, one of us will rebel, thinking it's the right thing to do. Alas, I have yet to see a defector succeed. Like they say, there's a first time for everything. Optimistic of you to assume that you'll be the one to prove that sentiment correct. Grill, come on, help me stop Thorn once and for all. As soon as we put an end to all this, the sooner I can get you home. Oh, we get to choose. Thorn it is. Poor choice, Grill. You see, through our main power supply and networking infrastructure were wiped out, the PC storage system was still intact. Behold, the creator of the multiverse, Arkaios. This is Arkaios, the one Pokemon above all, the creator of Arceus and the cosmic deities. Oh, we're, oh, we're battling that thing. Oh, okay. Oh, no, that's cool. Okay. All right. It's raining, so I'm gonna use Aquatail. Comet Shower, that's fine. It's level 88, so it's like, it's super leveled compared to us. So now, chicken here. It's not effective. Oh my god, that's not effective. Who knew that chicken was actually going to become, like, actually amazing? Yes! yes! We have defeated 
God's God! It doesn't matter now, Grill. Future you has destroyed our lab. We only have one other choice if you want to go home. Time for Archaos to reset this reality. In its place will be a new reality, devoid of any more outside interference. I hope this is the last time I have to do this. Did it just reset our reality? What? Just so you know, Grill, I always plan to send you home. That was always my mission through all of this. The only reason it got so seemingly out of hand back there is because it had to. It had to be something extravagant, a big climactic send-off, a satisfying conclusion to your grand adventure. Finally, time for us to go. Don't you get it, Grill? None of this has been real. Just a figment of our brain conjured up. A fantasy world that brings us a sense of comfort. A way for us to cope with the reality we fear waking back up to. All just an internal psychological struggle against yourself. We were always just trying to prolong the dream. But the dream is over. Our journey is done. Wake up. It was all a dream. The infinite universes we conjured up. The timelines, the people, and the story. A distraction from facing the realities of the world that we used to be in. This was never about the Pokemon or the journey. This was always about returning home. And Thorn knew that. We knew that. After millions of resets, hiding away, and cowarding from facing our true reality, it was time to leave. So, she dragged a younger version of ourselves into her reality and fabricated the events of Ego. From the council members to Team Fate, all the way to the final villainous climactic battle. To give ourselves the adventure we always wanted. To be ourselves. To enjoy life. To smile. To finally wake up.